Tell me they added more 762 by 39 and more 9 by 18. Uh, not, I'll vomit. I'll vomit. Not 9 by 18, but three new 762 by 39 rounds. <laughs> yeah, that's what we needed, dude. That's exactly what we needed, man. We needed more 762 by... Hey, can we get more 762 by 39 rounds? We need more more completely useless f***ing options to confuse people. Yeah, you have three more. All right, thanks. F*** off, bro. <laughs> Are you kidding? Why? What's up, everyone? Welcome to the podcast. We're so dedicated to talking about all the progress things in life, like music, content creation, and video games. I am one of your co-hosts, Jesse Kazam. <laughs> and I'm... I don't... I, Paradolia. I, and I'm Paradies Nuts. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Well, we should make you'll, a... get, you'll understand that if you were here live. Yeah, five minutes we before... Have this, there's always something that happens within like the 15 <laughs> minutes before the podcast starts that yep. should probably be the intro instead. Yep. Like a cold intro. We should just start doing that. Yeah. Or, you know, we can make the, the five minutes before we start recording another reward for our Patreon. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. The PP. The people have spoken. They wanted the PP. And so the PP is live. So yeah, so basically like today, this morning, kind of before we, uh, we've been gathering everything together and the, the Patreon for the podcast is live. There's a couple of tiers on there. Um, ad free access uh, or sorry, ad free viewing of, of the episodes, access to the episodes a little bit early. We've also finally, we've been requested to this for a long time, are conglomerating all of the original episodes that were spread around to all of our channels. You'll get access to the original like 30-ish episodes. Uh, and then we're even going to be recording an extra episode. Extra content. Extra content weekly. Dude, just going PP. back, uploading all of those videos, uh, we got like a, you know, a, a private playlist yeah. of all the old episodes and like, Bro, just listening to the first Dude. few <laughs> episodes, it's so funny. Not only not only is it funny because, like, you know, we have no... I mean, we still don't have any idea what the fuck we're doing. No. But Correct. Um, we... It, it, there, it tells a story, <laughs> right? It Dude. tells a story of, like, both of our arcs through, like, yep. Tarkov and, like, it's uh, just so young. Dude. Dumb and... Dude, yeah, full of happy thoughts about Tarkov. <laughs> yep, for sure, for sure. But what's funny is that it was it was like so bright eyed, bushy tailed back then, especially me because I was like so new to the scene and stuff like that. Holy cow! Yeah. Yeah. So we should probably say that uh, well, I'm sure we'll have links in all of the descriptions, yes. etc. But um, if you want to go to Patreon.com/slash The Podcast Pod. That'll take you to the page. Podcast pod. But, uh, and it goes without saying, thank you guys for the support of getting us here. Thank you guys for your interest in something like this. And, uh, you know, like Veritas said last week when we were talking about it, we don't want to change uh, or take away from the content that we're doing here. If if you don't want to support via the, the Patreon, that's totally fine. The, the podcast will remain the same. It's just if you want more, if you're interested in supporting additionally, uh, the Patreon will be there. So... Yes. Yes. Oh, so good. The wipe, huh? The wipe. <laughs> the wipe, the wipe was has I, hit. Was I was I correct with my? I, I made like some like numerology bullshit <laughs> like prediction. It wasn't the right day, was it? No. You know what's um, funny? You know what's funny and aggravating is that it was the date that the numbers on the Abdoblos teased, and that's annoying because everybody thinks every number is the date. And I'm always like, I'm not saying it's not that date, but I'm just saying the numbers normally don't mean anything. And it was the date this time, which also happened to be a Thursday. Veritas, they were they were on a roll. I had one of my mods went back and looked. The wipe hadn't been on a Thursday in almost two years. And the past few times they had done numbers, they were just trolls. And so we were almost far enough away where it was like, guys, come on, don't look into everything. And it was on a Thursday and it was according to the numbers. So now everything in the future, every single number, everyone's always going to be like, wipe, all oh, wipe Thursday. 
Dude, bro, they're such Nikita trolls. Is, is the ultimate troll. Like he's like nothing is ever going to mean anything except the one time it does, just to exactly just to fuck with you for all. Just so people can be like three years ago when Nikita scratched his left eye, it meant that. Yeah, it's just like, ugh, woof. Um, but we did get the wipe. Um, well, tell me all about it. Tell me all. About hey, it. I've, had your, I've had your tab up on the other screen. Oh yeah. Uh, every, you know, every now and then I'm randomly like looking over to see. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't seen you die. I did see earlier, dude. You were in like. Uh, is it? Cra I, I, dude. It's been so long. I don't even remember the call. It's a crack house. Yeah. On customs. On customs and like, <laughs> there was a just a fucking naked Timmy Gremlin sitting on the table. Sitting just on like, the table. Dude, that's something I've heard a lot of. Like one of the uh, probably the most common thing that I was hearing actually even pre-wipe and then also post-wipe is like everybody's fucking like a bush wookie. They're dude. all scared. Like, it must be all the new players. I did. I it, it, no, I you know what's crazy is I think it's just it's not even that it's new players, man. Like l l late wipe, it was like fifties level fifties. You'd find people in trees. I think it's it's twofold. They don't trust the game, and they don't trust exactly. Their it's twofold. It's one, um, the uh, the game naturally pushes people in that direction, which is something you and I predicted a long time ago. If you can't move quietly, you know, if you can't engage in the game in a way that makes you feel like you're in control then you don't engage with the game. You sit and wait because that feels like, in a weird way, that gives you the most control. You're taking control back. Because yeah. you're saying, I'm removing the variable, which is all the noise I make, all the movement I make. I'm not going to be out of stamina. You're like, like I, I don't think people th consciously think about that, right? But I think it's just like people are removing variables. and then It's the same reason why people can't bring themselves to crawl out of the foxhole. Yeah. When everything's, they're just like overwhelmed. They're like, I'm just going to sit here. Yeah. It's going to be fine. Weirdly, yeah. And then secondly is like that type of content is exploding. Like, it's just like, it's really funny content to watch. It's really funny TikTok to be ratting in a tree and kill a three man. But you don't know how long it took for that person to get there. You know what I mean? Like, or how long that person's at in the tree. Yeah. It's so, so much fun to wait 45 minutes yeah. for one. Hilarious. So I think it's like a combination of those things has pushed everything in that direction. But yeah, dude, you know what's crazy is the raid before we swapped over to the podcast, I died. And that, that was a 22 raid streak of like natural questing PvP. I went on 22 raids, which was crazy. That's That might be my highest raid streak ever. And uh, it's I died the very first raid of the wipe. I died. I hopped into a scav raid waiting for Valiant. Died again. Survived a raid. Went back into a raid. Had a bunch of quest items on me, 10 feet from the extract. Dude with a Mosin literally just leans out of his hidey hole, one taps me, hop back into another PMC, get one tap by an AI scav. At this point, were you like, fuck this wipe? I, dude, yes. I was like, this is the worst. So that was, of my first five raids, I think I died three. And then I went 22 raids in a row. And I Nikita just died. was like, oh, we can't lose another one. Yeah, I was close, dude. I was frustrated. Um... But yeah, so they're on this thing now where like they didn't tweet that the wipe was happening the next morning until 10 p.m. Eastern and patch and the like game went down like five hours after that. So they're really like shrinking that. It's not like in the morning. They're like tomorrow at this time. It's like, yeah, yeah. Five hours before. Um, So <laughs> it was on Thursday. Game went down. Uh, we can go through some of the patch notes and we can talk through the patch notes and talk about my experiences with each of these things. The big thing to remember here and, and like, not that this was unexpected, but like, you know, you get the whole gamut. This wipe is amazing. This is the worst wipe ever. I've already uninstalled. You know, you get the whole thing. For me, this wipe was really about like picking up the breadcrumbs that BSG laid out for you to have the right expectations. They literally, we've never had this before. But we had a roadmap of everything that was coming this wipe. And it was all quality of life features. And so this is a short wipe because they're wiping in again in December. And they told us everything. So like people are like, what did they change? You know, oh, this doesn't seem like a lot. They kind of told us like this was going to be basically quality of life features plus streets expansion. We're going to try to get through a wipe that works. And then we're wiping again in the fall. So my expectation of the wipe was that. I was like, okay, we're not really getting any big features, but I'm super excited for all the quality of life stuff. But a lot of people that like maybe don't keep up with the news 
came back because they heard it was a wipe and there was like they just changed the trader menu and i was like yeah you know <laughs> that's kind of it um so expectation was a big thing but we can go through some of the patch notes dude the streets of tarkov expansion they, they, they just literally have it listed as that they don't talk anything about it it's i know you didn't play a lot in the last wipe like a ton of ton and when you were playing, which was early wipe, Streets was unplayable. So I don't know how much of Streets you've actually like really gotten into. Yeah, not a massive, massive amount. I mean, I probably did like, I don't know, 75 raids yeah. maybe. Dude, it's huge. Oh, it God. is. Even more to learn. <laughs> Dude, like I would say it's probably 75% bigger. Like, what, like almost double? Almost double. What the fuck could they? Is it just, is it just more buildings unreal. or is there like it's a fucking It's so sick. Roller coasters. It's and... so sick, dude. Okay. So like <laughs> down by, okay, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, I, I love it so much. And what, you know what's crazy is I hate, it makes me hate the wipe even more because I just want to be level 40 playing streets. Like I legitimately don't think I'm going for cap of this wipe. I think I'm going to hit max traders and just play streets nonstop. I, all I want to do is play streets and I have to go to freaking woods and shoot scavs with a broken foot. And I'm just like, ah! um, so down by Concordia, which was the hotel farther back from that, there's this huge open area. Now there's a helicopter crash. Um, oh, the, it was there. There was an exfil like uh, with a yes. uh, uh, sewer. Yeah. And like the grass was that, is it like down that road? That's a scav exfil and it's kind of down that road. That's still blocked off, but it is like if you were to go down the road and take a left, that's the new playable area. Um, gotcha. But behind it, underneath in the parking garage, there's now like ramps up into the new area. And there's like a whole thing back there. There's a few buildings. There's a helicopter uh, crash. That's like a small part of the new area. And then um, you've got the check 15 building and... There was basically, um, it went west, like two or three streets, like where it basically, this was the, all these buildings were the perimeter of the map. It went west, like two streets. So full of buildings, playgrounds, medical areas. There's a new like cult building and like all sorts of like weird. There's a new, uh, marked room that I actually found the key for today. Tons of stuff. So it goes west, two streets. It goes north almost the entire length of the map. And you know, the the there was the the boundary scav. It was Klimov Street. And at any point, if you walked past this street, the street, the boundary sniper would just kill you. And that that base it went that that uh boundary sniper was the perimeter of the map, the entire north face of the map, like all the way at the north face. Now you can go past that two or three more streets deep. There's like a huge, uh, like almost like car dealership looking thing. And then there's a huge chain of hotels called the Cardinal Hotels, more hotels, lobbies, parking garage back there. Farther east of that, there's this like huge, um, like woods mini, like Bass Pro Shop store. And then east of that, there's like a kid. It's like a huge kid play place and stuff. And then dude, there's in, there's a two story shopping mall on streets now well like interchange yes and it has a bunch of the same stores as interchange literally there's a place where you can walk in it's like a mini mall but you can walk in and you can go to all sorts of like food court food stores down below you can go up escalators more stores more stuff down below and you know you'll never believe it veritas it's a disgrace because the lighting in that mall is perfect perfect like literally, it's embarrassing. If you if you're you're in the mall, you're looking at escalators, you're looking at stores. If you take a screenshot of that and then take a screenshot of interchange, it's embarrassing. Like I hope that what that was was a mini test run. Proof of concept. And then they're gonna change it because the lighting is perfect on in the mini mall. And you're fully inside, right? Like it's not like, oh, well, it's because the street's lighting from outside is different. You're like deep in the mall. It's dark, but it's the right type of dark. Okay. So, and then there's that. And then there's more stores to the left and there's stuff behind it. And it's just like, there's so many buildings and there's so many rooms and there's so many just like little things. 
And then additionally, they added to what was the existing map. So the Pinewood Hotel, which is where Killa would spawn, had two floors. Now it has an entire third floor with like balconies and more rooms. And like there's this like big ballroom up on the third floor and you can get out on some of the balconies and like there's tons of like cool stuff where there's like places where they were doing like surgery on scavs and just like out on the ballroom table and there's like meds everywhere. And then uh, the cinema, you know, the cinema, like the big, huge theater that had the sniper scab up on top. That's, yeah, you couldn't go in there. You could can you? now. They opened it, okay. and the whole theater is in there. And then, like, they added, like, a bunch of the buildings. Like, you know how we were talking about... Remember the criticism we had right when Streets came out? It was like, you never knew if you walked up to a door if you could open it or not. Like, a bunch of those doors are just now open. People are still finding, like, oh, I know for a fact you couldn't go in here. Like the tar bank, that there was a sign, you saw the bank, you couldn't go in it, now you just can. It's just like a huh. bunch of places like that, a bunch of places in Check 15, a bunch of places in uh, Concordia, like almost every single part of the map now has additional places to go into. Um, and then Lexos, which is now basically in the complete center of the map, has been basically redone to fit Caban in there, which is the new boss. Which, oh, yeah. Have you fought him yet? I haven't fought him yet. Did you see the picture of him floating around on Twitter? No. No? Oh, bro. Let me... Uh, I think I downloaded it. Let me just throw it in our... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this. Look at this chonker, bro. They tweeted it out for anybody that wants to find the picture. <laughs> Look at that chonker, dude. Fuck's sake. Yeah. It's, it's, it's another it's another Russian car salesman. Yeah. Like Rashala. Yep. Um <clears throat> so basically the uh Lexos, that whole area, has now been completely redone to like repurposed for him. But suffice it to say, for the streets expansion, man, it's huge. And we're getting another expansion in December. How like, does it run? It runs like, for me, like 10% worse than it did last wipe. Uh, which means they optimized the hell out of it. Because if it's 75% as big and it doesn't, and it like doesn't run quite as well. I don't know how other people, like a lot of people were still like really struggling to get frames on streets beforehand. I know that I'm, you know, privileged to have basically a supercomputer as my main PC. But I'm still in the like 80s to 90s when I used to be like 100 to 120. Um, so it depends. Now, once again, I know I'm on a very high end computer uh, and I know a bunch of other people are having troubles. It's it runs much better than Streets of Tarkov did when it was launched. You know what I mean? Like last wipe in December when it launched this runs much better wipe day than that wipe day, but it runs worse than it did three days ago. Gotcha. So like take that for what it is. You know what I mean? But um, uh, dude, for it literally being double, the, uh, like 75% the size, 75% uh, bigger, uh, that's kind of better than I expected. Um, the next thing was Caban. So uh, <laughs> Caban... Uh, runs a gang out of Lexos. His size allows him to fire various heavy machine guns without resting the gun. But at the same time, Caban cannot afford to be mobile, and therefore he either stays position in position or moves slowly from point to point during combat. He has a large number of well-armored guards, some of whom are former, mil former military. Um, he dwells in uh, Lexos, the area is heavily defended. The entrances are fortified with stationary machine guns and AGSs. The paths are mined, and there are snipers on the roof of the car dealership. Caban uses a custom rig to store machine gun boxes, wears body armor under his clothes. Lamau, that's them waving the hand at a 1400 HP stomach, you know. He wears armor under his clothes. Um, 
has unquestionable authority among his guards, and scavs nearby will help the boss defend and will engage in combat for Caban. Um, which has meant that, like, it feels like sometimes scavs, AI scavs, will even aggro player scavs if Caban spawned in that area. Like, they'll all mm. help Caban. I have not fought him yet. I ran around and, like, ran into him in offline once or twice. Um, but it's basically... How does he feel to fight against? Does he feel... Is he... I, I like conceptually that... Like... What they described is how Killa should be as well. Yeah. He's got chonking ass armor, a big ass LMG, no a helmet vision. where he can't see anything. Yeah, he should be he should be like this guy, except a little bit more mobile. Yeah. And but like half as accurate. Yes. Like twenty percent as accurate. Yeah. <laughs> because he all he's got is this little slit, right? Yeah. Like that's gotta be fucking miserable. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I haven't fought him enough. He seems fine. Um, it's it's basically Gluhar. There's like eight. It's kind of like Gluhar. It's like six or eight guards that are all like, you know, double guns. They can have BP. You know, they can have really good guns. They can have really good ammo. Um, they rocking like divers. And yeah. They could copy pasta from Rashala's guards. Yeah. There used to be like seven different ways to get in and out of Lexos. Now there are two because everywhere else is mined. There's like literally... Uh, some of the, some of the th ways you used to be able to get into Lexos, they've just walled off. Some of the ways they just put claymores around, which you can't shoot, which I think is dumb. They're like the lighthouse claymores. They just sit there and you can't shoot them. You can't throw grenades at them. You walk up there, one hit kills, boom, you're dead. Can you see them? Yes. But it's I've like, I've never actually saw them. But it's like, it's, it's weird. It's like, I kind of get it. But on the other hand, it's like, no one, like now once People will die to that mine once, and then they will just never attempt re-entry from that point again, right? They're just going to go around. So it effectively, you could have just put it a just wall there. people who, who don't know. Yeah, and, and it's it. like, it would be a sick mechanic if the mines spawned in different, like, if there were, like, okay, say this corner. If there were 14 possible spawn points for the mines, but sick only four mines spawned per raid, then you might, like, four to six mines you might shoot them, they blow up. You shoot them, blow up. You thought you cleared it. You came in, you didn't see that one. Boom, you're dead. That'd be a cool mechanic because you could attempt to enter Lexos from there, but you would have to like be really slow and make sure you're searching. But the fact that they're just yeah. static mines, you can't blow them up and they'll one tap you feels a little weird, but whatever. So now Wait, it was Lexos the one that had the second floor with like a locked room, like, yeah. like caged off. Yep. And then Lexos, and then there was that like Connex town between that building and the other building. Was just yeah, like, so there was like, you could go out uh, like on the side uh, where like underneath the locked room, there was yeah. like a little kitchenette kind of thing. You could go out the back and you go out the front. And then on the yeah. opposite side, you could kind of go out the back and front there. Yeah. And and so you're saying now the one? only way in and out is like the main entrances into like the Connex town. You can't get into the- So the two back entrances. Yeah, exactly. You can't really get into like the car dealership part underneath that second floor. You can't get in from that area anymore. Or between that building and Sparjo, there was another staircase you could go up to and I found out the hard way that there's mines there too. Um, Why? I don't know. I mean, it's, well, what they're trying to do is funnel people in so that they have to, they have to fight Caban head on when he spawns. Because the only two entrances that are there, there are mounted machine guns pointing at those entrances. Uh, so it's, it's. I mean, I get it, right? Like, that's how Caban would do it. He wants to minimize the okay, amount of ways yeah. in and out and heavily fortify those ways in and out. But uh, you know, I just think it'd be cool if you could shoot the mines and that way you could gain additional access, but it would aggro the guards or something like that. Anyways... Caban is a beefcake, and he really does do what they say. He'll stand still, or he'll walk omega slow. And just like, he's got the PKP, dude, and he's just like... Duh, 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 duh. His pockets, he doesn't have a rig. He has pockets, and his pockets are two by three. Because he holds the 100-round PKP mags in there, and PKM mags. Yeah, he's he's a chonky boy. Um, How, is, is he, like, killer accurate? I don't know. I don't know because if 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 he's laser beaming, yeah, then that's just fucking terrible design. Yeah, yeah. You know, if 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 he is kind of all over the place, right? Because he's sitting there probably fucking hip firing. Yep, a literal LMG. An LMG. 
and he looks like he's probably had a couple of bottles of vodka this afternoon and some pierogies, um, <laughs> then, I yeah. mean, you would expect him to be spray and pray. Yes. Something yeah. tells me he's probably a fucking... I don't know. Reno. I haven't fought him enough. I hope that he is chill. I hope he's he's not the best. I mean, he has tons of guards, and uh, in the gun he has is insane. But we'll see. So that's Kaban. I haven't fought him enough to know yet, but he's, he's cool. I mean, they do great with the lore, and they do great with the visual aesthetic of all their bosses. It's just like, are they fun to fight, or are they like raid-ruining <laughs> events, you know? He looks like Rashala's dad. Kinda, yeah. I could see that. Or like Uncle Rashala's mobster yeah. uncle that got Rashala into the business. Say hey, scrawny kid, come on in. You're gonna go work for I'll Uncle give you, Uncle Kaban. I'll give you customs. You run <laughs> customs for me, maybe you end up on streets. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> the world is yours, kid. Yeah. Um Let's go take out Tony. And don't ask any questions. <laughs> yeah, and that got Italian. That got really far away from Russian. Uh, kit presets are in the game. Uh, and uh, let me like. If you die, how many clicks until you're fully geared? I don't know because kit presets don't work early wipe, right? Because if I die early wipe, I'm not. I don't want to buy everything from the trailers. I'm not going to use the same gun again. I'm going to use, I, I have this gun. So yeah. does that make sense? So like I, I will use this and I'm excited to use it, but I'm not going to use it now. Now, I think, I, I think I actually would, but only because most of the shit that I, um, I would pick up. I want to buy and sell so much garbage back yeah. and forth to level up the traders it's you know because back in the day we'd buy 50 you know m9s yeah. and then just, and then sell them right and just back yeah. tell them right back right so it, i would almost sell everything as soon as i had it keep my stash kind of clean yeah. from items i'd be collecting quest items and then i would buy the same like preset ak where it's like a stock yeah. ak74 with a foregrip a rail a red dot and maybe like a butt pad. Yeah. And a muzzle break. And then it's like... Once I get to like level three traders, I feel like I'll start doing that more. Like running actual... Okay, this is the kit. You know what I mean? Um, but... Um, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. But for now, I haven't utilized it too much. But you can look at the UI. It comes with like 20 presets. Like 20 that they give. I think they're like a lot of the kits from like Arena. Uh, and then you can have 50. You can have up to 50 of your own saved presets. Um, and it's cool. There's two tabs. Like, you see your character, and then the one tab is, like, what the stuff is. So, like, earpiece, headwear, head cover, body armor, gun, backpack, rig, you know, secondary. And then the other tab you flip to is now inside inside those things. Do you want something in your backpack? Do you want What, what do you want in your rigs? Like, what mags in what order? Where do you want your meds? pockets and secure container so you can preset all of it and then you can leave stuff out if you're like okay i'm going to use whatever body armor i have but i know i just want this gun and these contacts you can just save that as a preset right and then rip yeah. rip that if you want um so the presets are cool i haven't used them too much uh where is is i i want to this might be later in the patch notes but i want to add this now Brother, this is the best. I will use this much more than the presets. I'm going to send you a screenshot because it's hard to it's hard to describe. Every when you're just on your character screen, every piece of your kit now where it says body armor, do you see the screenshot? Oh no. Where it says body armor, I can just click that. And it oh, shows yeah, me yeah. all the body armors I have. And it's a searchable thing. So if I have if you have stuff buried in cases, like this, I will use this infinitely more than I will use the presets because I'm a hoarder and I keep a bunch of stuff. And the amount of yeah. times, the amount of times I have an items case and I have six pairs of M32s in my items case, but I don't know that. So every time I die, I buy another pair of M32s. Literally just being able to click earpiece and say, I have some 
M32s. Oh, what helmets do I have? I have a Bastion. I didn't realize I tucked that U-lock away in some random rig in my case. You know what I mean? That is insane. So literally every piece, your rigs, your guns, your melee weapons, and you can just search for a specific gun, ump, and boom. Like, it's there. Now, it does use the, like, actual item names. So, like, an no. M700, you have to type in model space 700 for an M700. I was, I was gonna say, I was literally gonna say, it would have been, it's so trivial to just make it so that it searches the, it, like, it does a fucking text yeah. match on yeah the name or the, the because there's a name, then there's a short name, yep. then there's the description, yep. um, and like that's what we do in Battle Buddy. I just I just do a fucking substring search on literally everything on the item. Yeah. I think even like caliber. I think you can search caliber. Really? Um Yeah. But God almighty. I, so you need to know like you need to type like six B one three. If you're if oh, you're if you're searching, I think that once again, I think I'll use that way more than kid presets, more for things like ears, helmets, rigs. And body armors. Just like, what do I have? Oh, I didn't realize I had a killer armor. Boom. I'll just throw that on. You know what I mean? Like, that is going to be so sick. Yeah, but I'd probably never use the <laughs> actual search feature because it's not like you're going to have yeah. that many. Well, so let's say you have nine things of armor. Is it like three by three and you can scroll or is it one by three and you and you have to scroll through like one row at a time? It'll go, It'll like, the, the box will get as big as like three by three and you can scroll that way. Cool. Yeah. So you can. Yes, so I mean, that's that's plenty of shit. Like if you got headphones, you don't have to search for them. You just scroll until you find exactly. Them. Exactly. So it's pretty. Yeah. I don't know. It's I think it's dope. Uh, and then you can also click from the pictures in the picture I showed you to grid where it just shows you a grid of the things and on the grid or sorry, not the grid list. It'll show you a list of you of everything. That's just a text box. And at that, it'll actually show you how much ammo is in like the mag that's in the gun. Like it, dude, it's it's cool. So that, I think, is one of my favorite. Like, I'll probably use that more than the actual kit presets. Next big thing, the randomized container spawns. So this is oh, like yeah, the whole that. dynamic loot thing. Everybody was like wondering how this was going to be. So containers will now spawn at random points. The number of spawn points for containers has been increased on all locations. The number okay. of spawn points for containers has been increased. Large wooden crates, some terror group crates, large cash registers, and filing cabinets will not have their spawns randomized. Those are just fit. Like filing cabinets are going to show up in weird spots. Those things stay where they are, but uh, everything else. Okay, so there's two sides of this coin depending on who you ask. The Jaeger stashes. On the there was a podcast while the there was downtime, and uh, somebody asked him Nikita. Like, are the Jaeger stashes included in what's being randomized? And he laughed and he said, yes, those were actually why we devised the system. He hated people doing the stash runs and just like, boop, 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 boop. Like, it was so predictable. Now, what's funny is he laughed because he said that that was a big part of why, but the stashes are the only part of this that are still confusing. So in my experience, on Woods and Interchange, I haven't found a single stash. None. But on customs and shoreline, every time I go look for a stash, they're always exactly where they were before. So, like, I don't know. I suspect there's a bug with the stashes and how they're being distributed. I know yeah. some people said that they have found stashes on Interchange and they found them in new locations. Um, but in my limited experience, it feels like on customs, I've never looked for a stash and had it not been there, like, or found one in a new spot yet. And we've been playing a lot of customs. Um, okay. now, and because of that, I mean, I literally had people come in and be like, they ruined stash running. I'm uninstalling the game. Like people are really mad about their stash runs, man. So many people, that's how they loved playing the game. That's how they made all their money. And they're really butthurt. So if you take the, the Jaeger stashes out of it, the randomized loot container thing is so sick, Veritas. It is, in, definitively, there is more loot on the maps, not less, which is good. I was worried there was just going to be like so much less stuff. And bro, the amount of times I've been like, yo, a duffel bag, 
yo, dude, there's a freaking, there's a, you know, the little one by, uh, military crate, like leaning up on this forklift. They're not even all just like placed vertically on the ground. They're like on stuff and in corners. Sometimes you spawn into a raid and you turn and there's four duffel bags and you're like, yo, sick. You know, the big like reserve technical crates. Yep. On customs up top in Fortress, there used to be three. There could be six up there now, sometimes. Uh, the brown, like wooden the ones? The big brown wooden ones, yeah. There can be six. Some tucked in the corner, some up against the wall. Sometimes they're not there. Outside, they can... Dude, the randomized loot outside of the stashes is so sick, dude. You just, you come in, you're like, oh, there's nothing here. Oh, there might be something here. You just look around and there's loot everywhere now. There's crates everywhere and so I think it's sick. We've done woods, we've done interchange, we've done a little bit of shoreline, we've done tons of customs. And uh, like, I know it's not, it's it's a novel thing. Like long-term, it'll just be, you still just like check where they are. But I think overall what they did is it meant there's more loot on the map, not less, which I think is fine. Uh, because it's not like lead X's, right? Or gold, like gold. It's like tech loot, like quest items. Who cares yeah, if there's yeah. more of that now? Like it's, it's not economy ruining stuff. Um, but in my opinion, it just feels cool. I just keep smiling and be like, yo, like new duffel bags over here. Like, I'm, Oh, I want to loot this even though it's out in the open just cause it's new. And it's probably just the novelty of I've played 6,500 hours of this video game. So anything different just feels sparkly and fun you know what i mean yeah but the randomized loot containers it does seem like the stashes are bugged i don't know if that's been confirmed or anything but uh other than that it feels fun and it feels cool and it doesn't feel like they nerf loot the sidearm quick swap i think we i think i showed you the video when they like teased the video of that um it's pretty cool it's it it doesn't seem quick enough to make people want to use it, in my opinion, which is yeah, sad. Okay. It's like 30% faster than it was before. And I actually had somebody, um, I think it was Gigabeef, literally timed it. They timed like an AK, and they timed the reload, how long it takes to reload the gun, how long it takes to quick reload the gun, how long it takes to swap to a secondary, and how long it takes to quick swap to a secondary. Okay. And technically, the quick swap to the secondary was like 25% faster than a double tap R quick reload. So now, did he also test the variable where you have, um, oh, fuck, what was it? It was like if you change the your key bind. Oh, because there's a cooldown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For reload, like okay, so here's what it was: if you have double tap on R for quick reload yeah what happens is when you actually just do a normal reload you press r and the game waits for like a tenth mm -hmm. or a uh, you know 20th of a second and then says oh, okay he they're didn't not tap they, r again he didn't he didn't double tap now yeah. so there's there's a delay i wonder did he take that in consideration i don't know so it also consumes quite a bit of your arm stamina like it consumes like 30 percent of your arm stamina if you have full to do the quick swap and if you are low arm stamina, if you're low arm stamina and do the quick swap, you, you like raise the gun and it's like this. And then he like settles in. So if you have low arm stamina, it's not worth it because your aim is all over the place. I haven't, t I haven't tested this enough. I, I want it to be quicker and I want them, they, dude, this will be a running theme through the rest of the patch notes. They are just allergic to fun. Like everything just has to be hard. It has to be hard and it can't be fun. It cannot be an enjoyable experience. Oh, man. Um, this this will be a running theme through the rest of the patch notes. So, man, you know, I, I got to say the stuff you're like the stuff you're talking about before. I was like, maybe I'll check it out in like a couple of months. Now I'm like, not nah, same shit. Same old fucking game. Yeah, man. Yeah. Now, benefit, though, the sawed off shotgun does go in your pistol slot, which is sick i wanted it to go in your pistol slot so bad and it does um the other thing though to note is that this is cool so the the second half of this thing on the quick swap is cool and, and i would want it i would want it to be faster but i would still want this to stay upon training weapon mastery and the skill corresponding with the weapon type um 
Was that me or you? That was me. A bunch of my monitors just went black, so I, I didn't even know if I was going to be in this call when that came up. <laughs> Bro, what the fuck? Yo. I heard that. I felt that. That's crazy. Okay. I think man, you fucking lucky bastard. Last last time that happened to me, it was like <laughs> <laughs> internet goes down, gotta wait 15 minutes for Comcast to come back up. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh upon training. Unless somebody somebody stepped on a fucking landmine outside. Yeah, I mean Caban is coming for me. Um and the amount of arm stamina consumed will decrease and the speed of the action will create will increase. Meaning endurance, the endurance skill determines how much arm stamina you have and how quickly it's consumed. The if your weapon, if you're mastered with a weapon, that will increase the speed at which you will draw it. And the higher your pistol soft skill is will decrease the amount of arm stamina required. Okay. So that makes sense to me. Now once again, it makes sense to me still wanting the it just to be a little bit faster stock standard. You know what I mean? But it means if you rip a 5-7 up to level 3 mastery and get your dude to level like 40 endurance, it will be quicker and it will consume less stamina. And I'm excited to test that, you know, later into the wipe uh, because it might make a lot more sense later, basically. Um, improvements to the behavior, to the peaceful behavior of bots. This was like some super interesting stuff. Um, bots, basically the TLDR of all this is bots will do a lot more when they're not aggroed. Their pathing got updates. So they're not just like point A to point B. They'll like loot containers or like pretend to loot containers. They'll move around. They literally are testing almost like low ready on bots. It says the barrel of bots, uh, weapons will like oscillate up and down slightly during peaceful walking. Sometimes it'll be down. Sometimes it'll be up. It's weird. I haven't seen it yet, but Basically, when bots are not aggroed, they're going to do more things. Uh, they're not just going to run, sprint stop, 10 feet, sh wiggle, stop, check chamber, wiggle, check chamber, pull out a juice box, gulp, 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 180 turn around, shoot you in the face. Yeah. Uh, dude, re reload speed reduced. Uh, okay, this is like fix the memory leak, you know. Bots can no longer rotate instantly. Now to rotate by a significant angle while prone, the bot must assume a sitting position and continue firing. I haven't seen that happen, but I also don't believe sitting? it. Sitting? Yeah. You mean just crouch? I think that's what they mean. Okay. <laughs> I can imagine just like crisscross applesauce. <laughs> yeah. uh, improved, vis oh, improved visibility of bots at dusk. Bots. Uh, oh, bots can share an item with a player and... Uh, with a player scav when if a scav taunts to them so sometimes if you taunt to a scav they'll like drop an item oh like santa yeah kind of which is nice because when before karma you, you need a pilgrim you see an ai scav with a pilgrim right you just kill them for the pilgrim now you're like frick i need the pilgrim so now i think there's a chance if you taunt or interact with it it'll drop something which i think is cool well before karma you'd see a scav period you kill, kill a scav yeah that's very true everything. that's very true um, this is interesting. Bots now search corpses and take weapons, rigs, backpacks, and whatever contents they like from them. If a bot has a backpack and a rig, it will drop the backpack and rig next to the corpse and take the player's stuff. Contents taken by bots are not refundable in insurance. So that was, that's like a, just an insurance nerf. Which and is, is insurance still ridiculously overpriced compared to how it used to be? Oh, uh, compared to how it used to be, yes. But it, like, it's it's an insurance nerf and almost by proxy a solo nerf, because all you have to do to bypass this is like, if Seal dies, all I have to do is touch his body and delete everything and throw it on the floor. The bot won't pick it up. The bot only loots bodies. Gotcha. So if you're solo, you have nobody to ditch your stuff or even throw it on the ground. You're going to get even coming. less stuff back from insurance because bots are picking them up. All right. So here's the flip side of this, though. How 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 many bodies have we just run over or run past because they were just face down in the grass somewhere? They got killed by a scab. We never noticed them. Oh, yeah. I wonder, do, do the scabs now, are they potentially like hoovering up some of that stuff I'm so sure. when you see the scav walking around you kill him 
you, I'm he might sure. have a fucking slick on from you're that gonna, giga chat exactly movie you're gonna himself. you're gonna kill a scav and you're gonna be like what the hell this guy had a and then you didn't even realize that that scav killed this pmc or whatever um yeah i mean i mean it's funny because like the thing is if you're solo most people say don't insure anyway but it was just interesting that it was kind of an as someone who plays with primarily in duos i don't think this is going to affect me too much because most of the time one of us gets to ditch you know what i mean and if it's not we consider it a loss anyway but that is an interesting perspective where the scavs will now have more gear on them. I don't know if they're going to use the guns because that's the thing. If you if a scav has a Taz, and because the scavs have for like two wipes now been able to pick up PMC's weapons. If a scav has a Taz and picks up a meta M4, he will never use the meta M4, which is kind of fine by me because they're freaking aimbots. But I wonder if they change that. I wonder if they'll use if they'll swap to the guns now. Because they're going to ditch their own stuff on the ground and pick up the player's stuff. It's very interesting. Um, it's very interesting. I And, I, of course, I doubt that they're, like, limited by ammo. Like, they probably just... When oh, they pick yeah. up the gun, they probably... Somebody killed Sniper Scav yesterday, okay? Um, one of Valiant's mods, I think, killed Sniper Scav on Woods yesterday, and he had an SKS with 366 ammo in it. An unusable gun. Oh, no. The sniper scav did. Was he? Oh, wait. So he didn't take it from a player. No, no but I'm saying you were saying like scavs aren't bound by ammo. And that just made me think of that because. Was he shooting? I don't know. I haven't seen the clip. But the fact that that can even happen, I would bet $100 that that scav could totally shoot. And then you go pick up his gun and it's unusable. <laughs> For fuck's sake. I know, dude. dude. I was like, what? Oh, God. Um, yeah. Uh, more weird, weirdly, a lot more to AI, to bots. Uh, AI scavs have a group. The AI scav group system has been improved. And that doesn't mean like player scavs grouping. It means like the neural net of like small groups of bots. Now it, oh God! Don't 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 give it the respect to, to call it a neural yeah, net, sorry. please, God. And it, <laughs> this is not a hive mind. It is a it is a if within <laughs> fifty meters of aggro aimbot scav, self dot state equals aggro aimbot scav. <laughs> exactly. Um. Now a group of scavs that will operate as a team can spawn in at a certain chance. They are going to be better organized in combat and are essentially small gangs. I've not run into this yet. When playing as a scav, new commands to other scavs are available. The chance that a bot will execute this command is dependent on the reputation with fence. <laughs> the chance that they'll execute you. Okay? Yeah, yeah, it's 50%. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now you can ask you can ask other scavs for help. And it literally says all bots within a significant radius will go to the player. So I imagine if you're at max, assuming you're at max karma, it says significant radius. Uh, That's probably through walls too, yeah. with their back turned through walls. Yeah. You can tell Vignade, them to. Vignade, no. Yeah, you can tell them to spread out. You can tell them to take cover. You can tell them to be quiet. You can tell them to stop, stop moving, and you can tell them to follow you. Um, Wait, so do you have access to all of the... Because before, you you only had access to a very limited number of voice commands. Yeah. Now is the whole, like, the whole, like... I don't know how what, much... Command it, wheel the, opened up? These are, like, six specific commands that they listed. So I, I think it's, like... Because you only had hand signals and a mumble. Yes. And now you can, like, there's a bunch of commands you can use. Um, huh. So it's super interesting. Super interesting. Um, but, yeah, lots of bots... Uh, and then uh, and the little bot gangs. Quality of life stuff. The user interface of... Basically, the entire user interface has been redesigned. I showed you that picture. It's incredible. It's it's not necessarily the most elegant looking thing, but it's great. I am, We're all working through 6,000 hours of muscle memory. So the UI is nice because I can sell something to mechanic and then just click therapist. I don't have to hit escape, but I do, right? I hit escape and then I click therapist and then I'm like, God damn it. So it's really hard to rebuild the muscle memory, but the new UI is good, man. And it's, uh, it's, it's really snappier. You know how sometimes a great example, when you said you, we, we would buy like 50 Berettas and then sell them back. 
You know how you would buy the Berettas and you would have to back out and then you click Peacekeeper again and he wouldn't buy them and you had to back out and you click Peacekeeper again and you back out and you click Peacekeeper and then, he could, and then you sell them all to him? It is snappy, dude. If you buy something, if they can buy it, as soon as it hits your inventory, you can just click go sell and sell it right back to them. Everything happens super quick and is really responsive in the new Now, hopefully, UI. now, okay, so... That makes me wonder how if they've done any work on the API because maybe my my guess about how it used to work was every single thing you did was it was it would be like you, your wife's at the grocery store ring 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 hey honey can you go get uh, a gallon of milk okay cool hang up ring ring hey honey can you also get some cookies okay yeah yeah hang up ring 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 hey honey we also need some bread right instead it should be one call with all the things yeah 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 so that's and, a great and, analogy and when, when you do it that way everything is instant because it's just all client yeah. side so they should just like open up a fucking window so then when you buy a bunch of stuff it's all client side until you like back out of the menu and then it sends one transaction yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's how they would need to do so much of this shit if there was going to be an API. Yeah. Um, it's probably has nothing to do with that, but. But it's awesome. The The UI is great. Once you get used to it, literally millions of clicks will be saved. Um, they made the FPS counter smaller so it doesn't literally overlap over how much time you have in raid. Now it like sits above in the corner. Does Nikita, I mean, Nikita's probably like, it gives 10% more frames. 10% boost no, it, frames. It eats 10% less frames because he's still, I still think he was completely fucking lying to us when he said that the FPS monitor Drop, drops. hurts your frames because he just wanted to say, well, if you have it up, like the number's exactly. not good. So we're going to say, you can't but trust if you the use number. The third party, if you use the third party FPS counter, it would say the same thing. You were getting 75 and it would say the same thing when you pull it up. Yeah. So. Uh, double clicking on consumables automatically uses the item. Uh, in terms of functionality, double clicking is similar to use. Okay, so here's like a classic. I wish they would have. I wish I wish I could consult for them. I wish I could, they would have showed me this feature. You know what's crazy? I mean, I don't want to break any rules here, but I wish they would have put this on the ETS because the feedback I'm about to provide could have been provided. Um. It works in your stash. So, okay. if you're like, hey, like the other day, I was like, oh, I got the quest where I need to turn in the delicious sausage. I was like, I think I have one. And I double clicked on it to show chat. And I ate it. Even though I was 100 hydration and 100 energy already. I just double clicked on it in my stash. Why would I need to do that? Oh. It just shouldn't work in your stash. You know what I mean? So like people are like, how many Tashankas do they have? And if they're trying to like move them around in their stash and you accidentally double click on it, you're found in rate Tashanka. You just ate it. Even though you were a hundred energy and a hundred hydration. So in my opinion, I, but I wanted this feature. I begged for this feature and I'm glad it's in the game. My opinion is it should be separated between food and drink consumables and medical consumables. Because I want to double click a stim quick. I want to take my painkiller fast. That's how I've actually used it. When I'm in raid and I need to take a painkiller and I go into my gamma and I just double click my Vaseline and I start applying it. I don't have yeah, right click yeah. use, drop it on the ground, right? That, the meds, stims in your stim pouch, you just want to double click on it. I just want to use it. I just want to, uh, in the moment. But food, I think, should be separated. And then I also think it should... Um, Neither should work in your stash. If you are out of the raid, double clicking on it should pull up the context menu, in my opinion. Um, yep. But that's not how it is. Now, you can turn this feature off, but it's all the way off or all the way on, right? So I would like to see, I would like to see it. Like the, the first piece of feedback would be turn it off in your stash. I think that should just be like, that shouldn't be a toggleable setting. But then personally, I would like them to split it medical items and food. But if you're listening to the podcast and you've eaten a bunch of stuff you didn't want to eat, go into your settings and there's a double click to use. It's automatically on. Just turn it off and you don't won't have to worry about that anymore. I love it for meds, but it's, yeah. 
Um, you can turn on the tactical device uh, for your helmet by pressing the H key and you can toggle. So if you put a flashlight with a laser, you can toggle the mode by pressing control H. Dude, I, I died a little inside on that podcast that they did before, while the downtime. Somebody asked Nikita, they were like, hey, the angle is really weird because it doesn't shine where you're looking. It shines down at the floor. Is that intentional? And he was like, yeah. He was like, you know, we we thought it would, you know, it would be utilized as like a, like, you know, to illuminate your way. And I was like, no, please change that. He was like, but you know, if we have feedback and people want to change, we will change. It's crazy. It's the most useless thing because that's not how it's so funny to me that like little things like that, like everything is always realism. Yeah. But like who would put a, a flashlight on their helmet at a 45 degree angle? Because if you wanted to look down at the floor, now the flashlight is shining on your crotch. Well, you have it's you use free eyeball look. Yeah, in real life. But because of that, it's just crazy. So they need to make it level with the camera. Because if I want to look at the floor, I'm gonna look at the floor. If I'm if if I'm like in Tarkov, if there was an item on the floor, if you were looking level with the horizon and because the flashlight was illuminating the floor if you saw an item you wouldn't have otherwise seen if you crouch down to pick it up now you can't see it anymore because the flashlight's shining at you so you have to free look up in game <laughs> and like it's so weird so I, I think it's great that they added the keybind to turn it on we needed that but in my opinion we need the flashlights and the lasers to be level with the horizon in a in a PC video game. I need to be able to point where I want to look and have that where the flashlight illuminates. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's crazy. Um. Uh, and then they did the thing we saw. You have uh, the healing. If you, I have my heels on four. If I hold four and scroll wheel, it shows everything. It shows all of my limbs that are damaged. It shows mm -hmm. it, head and thorax are always going to be at the top. If they're hurt, it'll also show if there's a fracture or if there's anything like that. So you can get a really good idea of like your entire body's thing and, and heal whatever limb you want. That's pretty cool. Added new uh, images to the loading screen. Uh, the gun stand. The weapon stand uh, is in the hideout. It's I haven't unlocked it yet. It's pretty far in the hideout unlock. But um, it's level one is 108 cells. There's three levels, so you upgrade it. Level one is 108. A weapons case is like 52 or something like that. So the, the first level weapon stand is huge. Like, it's like the double. It's That's bigger than a thick items case, I think. Or sorry, a thick weapons case. Um, and then level two is 132 cells and level three is 182 cells. I think they said that level three weapon stand is almost as big as a thick items case. Uh, nobody's gotten there yet, I don't think, so I haven't seen pictures of it. But um, you, huh. you can only put weapons uh, with all critical components. So you can't take a um, pistol grip off and put it on because they, like, they want it to be displayed. So they want like actual weapons hanging there. Yeah, yeah. But he was funny. It was funny because he would they asked about it in the podcast, and he was like, "We thought about restricting the amount of end of, like you couldn't put more than this amount of per gun, like you couldn't put more than this amount of MP7s or whatever on." But then he was like, "Then in the in the studio, we filled the whole thing with a uh, the um the RSH12 with the scopes on it, and we thought it looked really cool. So <laughs> we we said you could do whatever you want, and I just found that to be hilarious." But it's a, it's just a huge, it's just a huge weapon stand that is going to end up being, even at level one, two extra weapon cases of storage. Huh. So, that's pretty sick. Neat. Oh, dude, are you like full down? Yep. Yeah. Stream's dead. Dude, I'm so. sorry. Freaking rip. <laughs> Fuck my life, I guess. Damn. Freaking rip, dude. Is it just your internet? I guess. Or but it's just it's, it's just it's just my OBS's connection to Twitch, dude. That's fucking I was about to I'm say still, I was gonna say it's your internet, but then this call is being totally fine. 
I'm still sitting in town in Diablo. The call's fine. It's... I don't know, dude. I'm... I don't know. I can't make sense of this shit anymore. Oh, freaking damn, dude. Well. <sighs> Rip. Well, at least you're live. Yeah. Because yeah. I can just, everybody can watch. Yep. There and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Damn. Fuck it. Well, Sag. Um,. So yeah, so the gun stand is cool. I haven't gotten it yet, but it just seems like a W quality of life, more stash space effectively, just more things to do in the hideout and actually practical uses for those things in the hideout long term, not just like I got rest space to level three and then now I'm never going to touch it again. You know what I mean? So there's something there. Um, The quick sale of scav gear. So now when you... Super simple. When you come out of a scav, you take everything you want out, and then there's just sell all to fence. You sell everything else to fence. The money's in your stash. Boom. Probably millions of rubles worth of stuff I just leave behind because I don't feel like <laughs> going to Ragman and selling, repairing this coal pack, you know what I mean, that I had on my scav. So yep. it ends up just being a little bit of extra cash and nice quality of life thing. Um, hmm. Some general stuff. Uh, some general, like, animations in the hideout. Now, anytime you're crafting something, if that craft is in process or completed, it'll always just shoot to the top, so it's easy to find and grab. If something is crafting, it's like a green bar now, so you can, it's easier to tell at a glance how close it is to being done or if you have something done. Um, so, like, just some super small quality, quality of life visual stuff for the hideout. Now, before we get to what will I know be a spicy conversation, I want to take this quick second and thank the sponsor for this episode of the podcast, and that is HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy and fun. Uh... We've used HelloFresh. We've been sponsored by them for a while. I've used HelloFresh for like eight months now. It really is incredibly convenient. Everything from the online experience of picking what type of food you want, how much of it you want, taking a week off. It's convenient getting everything in literal bags, all the ingredients, exactly what you need. That's the thing I always do is I need cilantro for like one thing. So you buy a whole head of it. And then three weeks later, I throw the rest of it away because I only needed just this one bit and I suck at cooking. So it's like nice having just what you need. Uh, so yeah, we've used it for a really long time. The food is delicious. The variety is huge and uh, it's super flexible and customizable. Yeah, I still got uh, two and a half weeks oh, before I can... You're just salivating over that HelloFresh. <laughs> I'm looking at the hamburger mm. and I'm looking at the golden chicken schnitzel and mm. I'm looking at the honey chicken. Oh my God, with asparagus, dude. Mm. So literally we were just talking to my wife this morning, um, but both of us both of us were, were getting older. We're not active. You know, we're not in the best shape. Uh, so uh, one of the things that we're planning on doing is uh you know starting to do some hiking i want to do some rock climbing um but hello fresh is literally like going to be a big part of our meal plan yeah. to like be able to eat healthier um yep i can't wait I and can't consistent wait. and consistent portions that's the other thing you make something and in my head i go let's make enough of it so we have leftovers but because it's all there i end up eating way more than i need and then there's no leftovers so, yeah, I totally feel that. Uh, there's lots of other cool stuff, too. Um, there's, like, the HelloFresh Market, which has, like, over 100 of snacks, sides, and all sorts of, like, uh, stuff that you can add. There's over 40 recipes to choose from every single week. Um, and, and something, like, that I normally mention is, like, we definitely got caught in that spiral of we wanted to cook more, but then we never really bought anything from the grocery store because we didn't know what to cook or what ingredients we needed. So we ended up going out to eat a lot and going out to eat super expensive. So the convenience and it can even save you money if you're going out to eat a ton like we were. So uh, the link has changed for those that listen. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 podcast and use code 50 podcast 
for 50% off plus free shipping. That is podcast. Sorry, that is HelloFresh.com slash 5050podcast and use code 50podcast for 50% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode. Mm. Mm. Okay. Now, they removed... So graphics and performance, they worded this really weird. The visual aspect of anesthetic has been changed. I don't know why they worded it that way. They got rid of the pain killing sharpening. Okay. What they added instead was a desaturation effect. Okay. A desaturation? Desaturation. It's going to be the opposite. And it's aggressive. Shouldn't it be the op? What is it? Black and white now? Shouldn't it be the opposite, Dude. bro? You took painkillers. I want to see like, like <laughs> yeah, Ellis. Fucking, yeah, I want to see like Paisley like floating in the fucking air, and and I want to hear like a uh, 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 what the hell is a sitar? You know, in the <laughs> like what the fuck? Yeah. So desaturation. Okay. It's aggressive. If it's an over, if not raining, if it's overcast in Tarkov, it, your game looks black and white. It's crazy. Now, I still preferred that to the painkiller effect, but I definitely thought that they went aggressive and they should tone back. They should tone it back, right? I think that it should be half as desaturated as it currently is. But it was like, whatever, okay? Like two hours before the podcast, they put out a patch that fixed a few bugs. One of the bugs that they fixed was... They hadn't added the other feature that was supposed to happen when you take painkillers. Tell me. Oh, no. Which was chromatic aberrations. It's borderline tunnel vision. The edge of your screen is now blurry. It's like vignette with just blur, not black. Dude. <laughs> I was like, I was like, man. I was trying hard to like be I'm like insulted, dude. I was trying hard to be like, okay, listen, the desaturation, I'll get used to it. It's fine. You know, maybe they'll, maybe they'll add some of the color back. And then that was a, <sighs> that was a sucker punch. Well, dude, when, when they added that, oh, we, a, sorry, we, we forgot to make it completely unbearable. Yeah. We removed, we removed the shit and then we made it less shitty but we forgot to kick you in the fucking balls while you were down. Yeah. And it's like, this is what I was saying. They're just like allergic. Like, I don't know. I, I, yeah, it's, I don't even know what to say. Like maybe this won't even be a conversation because, because we're both rendered speechless, but like it goes back to what we've always talked about, which is like, cause somebody, somebody said this earlier. Well, and I'm not saying this was a idiot chatter. So somebody said the actual logical thing, maybe they're trying to like really, you know, push people into using less painkillers. And I was like, that would be great if they spent any amount of time making this absolute dog nuts, awful mechanic better. And then we didn't need to run painkillers as much, right? It, it's like, if that's what it is, if you just like, just do if that's what you think, just do an experiment for yourself and don't pre-pain at all for like three days. And after the eighth time you get shot from a scav when you just barely almost ran out of stamina and you're limping and you touch a bush with one eighteenth of a pixel and now you can't move and you're limping and you're blurry vision and the AI scav kills you with a taws because you, my highly trained individual is completely immobilized. Do that for a few days and then tell me that they should be pushing people to use painkillers less. I am all for, I have made entire videos about how I think we should not be pre-popping painkillers, but you can't just have us stop pre-popping painkillers. That has to come with fixing the goddamn painkiller mechanic. It's just so stupid. And so... 
I am, dude. I get fired it's up. Literally, it's everybody was so excited about that change, and it's worse. They made it worse. Dude, I and I'm, I want so hard to give them the benefit of the doubt, and like they responded to feedback, but it's like, ah, uh, we. It doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be this way with such minor mechanical differences. We could have the raids could be more fun, more realistic, more hardcore, and and you could get rid of pre-popping for forever. And if you don't believe me, go watch my video I did on PvP where I spell it out. But it, but it's true. With very small mechanical adjustments to this game, you could get all those things more realistic, more fun, and you would never need pre-popping ever again. Yeah, just adrenaline feature. Yes. Problem solved. Problem solved. And then you could make you could make taking painkillers whatever you want. Black and white, inverted screen, whatever. But but without addressing the problem, it just is such a kick in the nuts. Especially Bro, you know what? They should make it so that it takes like 90 seconds for the painkiller to kick in. But you got 60 seconds of adrenaline, you know, or yeah. like whatever. And then just don't make it so shitty. Oh, God, dude, I don't know. It's so, so fucking dude, dumb. I don't know. I, they, so that happened like literally like an hour before the podcast. That update came out where they added the chromatic aberrations. I imagine that right now social media is going insane. And I hope that they hear the feedback. The thing is, is if anyone from PSG is listening... Would I would the, my concern because the feedback from this is going to be bad. It's going to be we hate it. We we want pink. It's like Steam Audio. Th this is going to be a great example. Everybody talked mad shit about Steam Audio until they changed it. Everyone, dude. Everyone said the audio sucks. Everybody said Steam Audio ruined the audio. Everybody said it sucked. We got Oculus Audio, it was worse, and everybody said, bring back Steam Audio. The audio was so good when we had Steam Audio. And what drove you and me crazy about that is that that's not what we wanted BSG to hear. <laughs> we wanted them to hear, fix the audio, please, not this is better or that. And that's my concern here. It's like if you're from BSG and you're listening to this, I we don't. It's it's not just like a back or forth, black or white, we want this one or we want that one. Please hear the feedback. Like, ah, dude, I, I'm just so concerned that they're going to be like, what? We gave them what they wanted. You didn't. This Nobody wanted this. Nobody wanted this. We wanted the sharpening to be gone. Nobody wanted this. So, I don't know. I was looking for that. You said social media. Uh, th this is unrelated, but as I'm scrolling, I see Desmond... Oh yeah, dude, Desmond. It's just a little snippet of Mo's and infantry carbine out of stock. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh uh, fuck, man. Desmond's tweets are like assault mine, but like in a good way. You know, what I mean, you're just like it's hilarious. He's just saying what we all. But are it's thinking. assault mine. It's funny. So yeah, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Frickin'. I don't know, but that's that's where we're at, and that's what we're living with. Blurry screen, black and white, but scavs still shoot you through the bushes. So sick. Um, new technology of fog rendering has implemented on streets of Tarkov. The lighting I have noticed looks banging on streets. It just looks good. Maybe that's why the mall looks so good, because they did whatever fog. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, new calling system has been added to Lighthouse, which should improve frames there. I haven't played Lighthouse yet. Uh, improve the culling system on streets and increase the accuracy of the performance system. Uh, optimization of resource consumption by the sound system because I think the audio was taking performance. I don't know. Uh, they added the guns, the SBT and the AVT, which is a semi-auto Mosin and a full auto Mosin, essentially. Uh, the AK-12, the PKM and PKP, which are I, I believe are only accessible via Kaban. Rizzi's sawed-off shotgun. Uh, and then they just like updated all the models and animations for the PM and PB pistols, <laughs> which I thought was funny. They look cool now. Um, they added a bunch of new ammos 
And when uh Oh God, more fucking ammo. Yeah. yeah. God, tell tell me tell me they added a fucking nine by eighteen and seven six two by thirty nine. Tell me they added more seven six two by thirty nine and more nine by eighteen. Uh not, I'll vomit. I'll vomit. Not nine by eighteen, but three new seven six two by thirty nine rounds. <laughs> yeah, that's what we needed, dude. That's exactly what we needed, man. We needed more seven six two by hey, can we get more seven six two by thirty nine rounds? We need more more completely useless fucking options to confuse people. Yeah, yeah, three more. All right, thanks. Fuck off, bro. <laughs> Are you kidding? Why? This makes me more mad than anything else, <laughs> dude. It's fucking brain dead. There should be mm. three of every caliber. Delete them yep. all. Yep. Uh, it was funny because he mentioned that they were like to fill the gaps in between like the meta and the second best and the third best. And I was like, oh, that's what we needed. Yeah, let's fill well, the gaps, baby. Well, we don't need to fill the gaps because we Bend have over. so let many fill, Let me useless, fill your gaps. We have so many useless ammos. Use those ammos to fill the gaps, right? Like we don't we don't necessarily need three more. We just like... We have three that are usable and six that no one uses. Adding three more to fill the gaps between the three that are usable seems weird when you could just use the six that no one uses to but fill in the real, gaps. But in real life, uh, if FMJ only has 32 pen. Yeah. We measured. We have ballistics gel. Yeah. It only has 32. So we can't make it 34. But you right? can't rotate your flashlight on your head. Yeah, I don't know. They added one 300 blackout, one shotgun round, one F, uh, blah, 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 one MP7 round, three 762 by 39s, three 762 by 54, uh, and then one 9 by 19. New uh, weapon modifications and equipment models, which is cool. Lots of, lots of high pen rounds or no? Uh, literally, most of these, like, uh, the they actually. They posted an ammo chart the next day, like today. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? That's just a, that's just a joke between me and chat. Oh, okay. <coughs> well, um, oh. most of them. So none of these ammos are like the new best. They're mostly like the new second best or new third best or whatever. Um, <sighs> various balancing changes to the characteristics of ammo. I don't know what that means. Uh, various balancing changes of trade, various balancing changes to crafts. Okay. Boom. Uh, they adjusted the sizing of things like a Vepper Hunter is now five by two or four by two instead of four by one and a few other little things. Okay. Balancing changes to quests. This is going to be interesting. I'm going to be interested to hear your thoughts on this. Okay. So basically, think in your head of like some of your least favorite quests in Tarkov. They're on this list. There's a list of like 15 quests. Tarkov Shooter Part 8, Grenadier, the Stylish One, Capturing Outpost, Hunting Trip. Oh my God. Some of the Huntsman Paths from Jaeger. Like a lot of the ones that sucked, right? But they didn't say what they did to them, but they just said, hey, we adjusted these quests. And then when asked about it, Nikita said that they literally, Nikita was like, we are trying to make these quests more accessible, not harder. Like, we don't want to make them harder. We're just trying to make them. There's lots of quests in the game and the storyline quests are still coming out. So we wanted to make these ones less painful. Make up your mind. Is the game going to be fucking cancerous or is it going to be fun? Right, make up listen. your fucking mind, Nikita. Stick to your guns, you pussy. Come on. <laughs> I don't know. We made we made shooter born in heaven 700 meter headshots. They <laughs> need to be collaterals. Every bullet needs every one needs to be a two for one. Yep. And you need to be out of arm stamina when you take the shot. Yeah. Or remove the fucking chromatic aberration from the painkillers. Choose one. You have one you, there's one path, Nikita. He'll, will you choose violence or will you choose Tarkov? You will choose violence. Um so the only quest. I'm so interested to hear. Right, violence is the is the one you want compared to oh. the alternative. Then he'll choose Tarkov. I'm the only one that's been like leaked because like I have Shooter One in Heaven already. So like this is one of the ones 
early. Well, you just don't, you know, it, they, they made it much earlier now. It's not like I've gotten that far. They made it accessible much earlier. That was one of the quality of life things they did a while ago. They made it accessible so much earlier. So if you hit any of these shots, it's cool. Okay. That's one point in the right direction. I'm, shooter, I'm waiting to hear. Shooter born in heaven is now, uh, instead of any, instead of, it just had to be a headshot 100 meters. You could use whatever gun, but it had to be a headshot over 100 meters. Now, there is no distance requirement at all, but you have to use a bolty. Huh. So it's bolty headshots. Let me let me make sure. I'm going to pull it up here. Yeah. Bolty headshots, instead of needing three, you now need five on each map. And they are including, they brought interchange back into the fold and they added factory. Bro, oh, it's okay. Listen. Oh, wait, no, they didn't. They changed that. Maybe that was, maybe that was in the thing today. The tweet that I saw earlier, they literally had factory on it. I saw a tweet and it was a screenshot and it had factory Yeah, they changed it in the update today. Okay, the update that two hours ago, where they added the chromatic aberrations. They took factory off, which is fine. So yeah, so they added interchange back. So interchange streets, lighthouse, custom, shoreline, reserve, woods, five headshots with the Balti, any distance is shooter warning in heaven now. I, I had this same reaction. Like I didn't I'm, know I'm, what to think. I didn't know it, what to okay. think. Okay. The people are going to mauled hard because I like Shooter Born in Heaven and it's one of the most hated quests, so people are mad that I liked the way it was. But it's it's less shitty than it was, but it makes less sense. Yes, that's what Seal was it, talking it, about that. It it makes less sense of like what the quest and what the lore is supposed to be, but the quest yeah. is better. Yeah. It's not better, it's well, less yeah. bad. Yeah, 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 less bad. That's a it's not There's a distinction. It's not better, Tarkov, it's just less it's not bad. It's better, just less bad. <laughs> but like but it's also just Tarkov shooter part get fucked. Like it's just <laughs> another it's just another boring bolty thing that there's already like 17 of them. Why? Yeah. Listen, I I uh, my Opinion on this is basically complete indifference. The they should have made it. They should have made it. They should have made it five headshots over forty or fifty meters. Yeah, with any gun. Yeah, yeah. So that was I was. We were talking about that. They could have done it the other way. So they could have dropped it from a hundred to seventy-five meters and left the quest the same. And that would have effectively done it because you could use any gun you want. And at 75 meters, like so many more shots are open to you. Like customs is so much easier for 75 meters versus a hundred, like so Yeah, much. and interchange, like interchange had like, yeah. it was literally, you have to exfil camp, spawn camp, yeah. or there's like two hallways that are long enough to get those yeah. kills. And otherwise like, and I remember having to do it when it was 150 meters. Yeah, I remember that too, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so I'm kind of completely indifferent on it. I know that this will be much easier to accomplish. Um, I know that this will be much easier to accomplish for a lot of people. Um, I, you know, I love Bolties in Escape from Tarkov. And so showing some, some Bolty love, suppressed DVL, um, you know what I mean? Whatever. But, uh, but it was interesting. And then they, they upgraded the reward to it as well. This is the this is the biggest part of it for me is like you unlock the mag case you unlock the g28 you unlock the craft for m61 but now you get five sniper levels instead of two so if the other quests are unchanged that means you don't have to reload a mosin in a bush to get psycho sniper done because that was how it always was. It was like you literally... I, I never, ever once did that. Yeah. And you probably never got Psycho Sniper done. <laughs> oh. No, I did. I just went factory. Yeah. And just like... It's just... It's... A factory with a voodoo on the VPO. Yeah. 
It just took or so Mosin and long. It was so many skill points. And now once again, once again, it's sad because... Okay, so well, I was trying to remember what you said. It's n not good, just less bad. Like, we've talked at length many times about how they could make the sniper skill better, right? And the sniper skill could level by effectively sniping, and then it would be okay if it was a higher requirement on the skill. But, yeah. but because you only level sniper skill by hitting leg shots, you know what I mean, and reloading your Mosin by requiring Psycho Sniper level 9. So they made it less bad by being like, oh, well, here's more free levels to get you there if you complete this quest. I hope eventually they rework the sniper skill. You know what I mean? Um, but that is... So that's Shooter Born in Heaven. They brought Interchange back. Five kills instead of three. Have to be headshot. Have to be a bolty. Any distance. And you get five levels of sniper skill. So it's no wonder the Mosins are sold out. Yeah. Well, that's now, even just... Now it's, now it's 2019... Yo. We want the Mosin. Mosin just man. everybody's a fucking... Yeah. Mosinling running so, around. So, like, that was a much more aggressive change, like, in a, in, a, in a direction that made the task, like, easier to accomplish than I would have thought they would have made. So I'm really interested, like, Test Drive Part 1... Test drive was, it's the kill people with the Reap IR on the M1A, right? That quest was fine until they made it a 60 meter requirement. And then that quest became toxic. That's on the list of quests that got changed. So like, what does that mean? Tarkov shooter part eight. That's the kill three PMCs and one raid on woods. That one has been a pain point for a lot of people. Hunting trip where you have to kill Sturman with the Hubble telescope on your M700 and they added a distance requirement to that two wipes ago. <laughs> no, the James Webb. Yeah, the James Webb. You had to put the Marsh Tactical and you had to do it from over 60 meters away because what people were doing is they'd put the, the mount with the JP Enterprise's mount with the Delta Point on top and they would rush Sturman and they would shoot him in the head close. But you couldn't do that anymore because they added a distance requirement. So that one's on the list. So like a bunch capturing outposts is on the list. So like a bunch of the ones that were the most toxic ones are um are on this list of ones that were changed and the only one that we've seen is shooter born in heaven so i'm really really interested to see what the rest of these quests are so this was the quest overhaul it wasn't a complete overhaul to how the quest was it was they were just saying hey we're messing with some of the quests that suck the most bro you know how i know the earth is not flat because uh, i did that quest with the this original scope and i had to low earth orbit Kerbal space program that shit to Yo. line up a shot and I could see the curvature from where I needed to stand. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's how I know. For sure. Uh so interesting to see what the quests are. Shooting range. They uh okay, so then they made some of the things in the hideout easier to get. The shooting range costs less to construct. The defective wall is easier to construct. The gym requires less things to construct. So just like quality of life, more people can access more things in the more people can ask more things in access more things in the hideout. Random fixes, fixes, um, yeah, nothing. Display of fresh hands, soft locks, using on about grenade launchers. Uh, sounds of explosions. Um, the only other like thing of note at the bottom was, oh, fix the unnatural viewing angle when going in and out of aiming with the berserk perk, which is adrenaline, uh, with elite stress resistance. So for the six people every wipe that get elite stress resistance, the, the cool perk, the adrenaline perk, what has been bugged for five years and they finally fixed it. Um, how? I don't know. Where's the? Oh, fixed incorrect calculation of target visibility through bushes and trees for bots. Yeah, believe it when I see it. Yeah, fix the memory leak. But at least they're working on it. Yeah, you know what? You know what they uh, they did that by making them completely and utterly blind. Because I just <laughs> yeah. watched I just watched an, an aqua clip 
where he rolled up behind one of the scav boss guards and shot him about 11 times in the back of the head. Yeah. And then and then shot him about 14 times in the leg. He slowly turned around, chased him back into the dorms and then walked backwards through the door. Yeah. And Aqua just took him out with a just Yeah. Christ. Now here's something I'm really Okay, so that's the patch notes. That's the patch notes. That's the wipe. Um before but yeah, overall the TLDR is this. Last wipe on day two of wipe day was as depressing as it gets. Streets was completely unplayable. We had invisible players everywhere. Every single map in the game, except for two, didn't have audio occlusion zones because they had just switched to Oculus and they just did streets and customs and everything else was just like, suck it. The flashlight bug, like last wipe was brutal, dude. This wipe, while including less large features, is so much more playable, okay? So much more playable. Streets is a little bit worse performance, but you can get in. Scav queue timers are long, and sometimes there's a bug where it's kicking you out of your scav queue timer. I've never had it happen on my PMC. Okay, that sucks. Little bugs, like for some reason, looting is like really loud. The volume of looting is just like really loud. It's definitely oh, that, a bug. Wow, that's that's the 14th time that bug's come up. Yes. So I'm sure they'll get to that. So here's the thing, right? I know some people like to just call us negative Nancy's and say we like to complain. You know what? I do like to complain about stupid stuff. That's stupid. I would, I'd rather complain about shit that deserves to be complained yes. about than complain mm -hmm. about people I complaining. I will go to my grave that the stuff we complain about is worth complaining about. Um, Dude, bro, bro uh, I, I have I have to say this because this was actually fucking amazing. I, I tweeted something that was basically like, listen, I hope you guys enjoy I the wife. I, I'm taking this one off. And one of the responses was like, bro, nobody fucking asked. Nobody cared. And I, and I pulled up his Twitter and it's literally... He, me and Donut Operator are living rent-free in this nerd's head because he's following both of us and he, he's only ever responded to me and Donut Operator. Really? And I'm like, bro, you seem to care a lot yeah. given that you respond to all of my tweets. Yeah. People you care a whole lot. People are weird. So overall, I would say the swipe is good. I think almost all of the quality of life features are really good. They hit the nail on the head and they're things we've asked for for a long time. I think a few of them are in the right direction, but require a little bit more effort. And I think the painkiller thing is a swing and a miss. And I hope they understand why. Um, the streets expansion is I cannot, I am too weak to hold the weight of the W. And I've said it for years and I don't care if you call me a flip flopper, whoever designs their maps they're the crown jewels of BSG. It's so good. It's so cool. The map is even more traversable now, which is what I loved about it. The amount of the amount of random things I've seen. I open a door that didn't used to be open, and I go, I know people aren't going to know this door's open. I'm going to be able to make flanks here like insane. Like it just, I'm. It's such a good map, and I'm so excited to play it. But if you haven't played Streets yet, please try it. And if you have good enough frames, I promise you, you will have the more fun than you've ever had playing Escape from Tarkov, learning that map. It's so good. That's a huge W. But there's definitely things in the wipe that suck. But I would say it's a, it's a much more playable state than day two of last wipe. So take that for what it is. How many PMCs with the ex expansion? I don't know. Um, I don't know. They upped it to like 20 at the end of last wipe. I don't know if they upped it again. Uh, I've been doing quests, so I've been mostly scaving streets and going like customs. You know what I mean? Uh, I imagine what they'll do is exactly what they did before. Uh, my guess is that they didn't increase the PMC count yet. And once they get the wipe stable, like halfway through, they'll increase it. Because that's what they did last time. They just kind of increased it like two months ago before the wipe. And then they did the expansion. And I bet they'll increase the player cap. And I, I bet they'll just kind of stagger it like that. So it's not um, a ton of stuff all at once. Especially since we're getting another expansion in December. The only other thing, the only other like noteworthy thing to talk about is they released uh, a big image. They've been doing this for a while now of stats of last wipe. How many people went bare? How many people went USEC? You know, just interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. I would love like serious, serious Veritas. Don't embellish 
or anything because I'm asking the question. How many, how many players, how many accounts would you guess got max endurance? Like 52. Like, and I'm trying to ask, I try to ask the question. I'm not trying to lead the witness. Like just a rough ballpark number. I don't even, we don't even know how many like, players. Like percent? Like a, no, like I, a number. Like, do you think 200,000 people got max endurance? Or do you think 200 people got max endurance? Of course I'm setting you up for failure here because it's just pulling the number out of your butt. But like, Wait a minute. I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember because two wipes ago, it was like everybody. It was easy to get max endurance. Max en endurance was the the thing that I always maxed first, always. Yes. But then they made a change at some point that made it so that all of a sudden strength was like easier. Now, that's now because um, you just overweight all the time. So like I'm I've been always maxing. But you can do either. I have the numbers for how many people got I'm max say strength. Say a thousand. Dude. Would it blow your mind to know that 76,000 players got max endurance? No. Dude, it kind of blew my mind. What What did you end up with? I don't know. I just, I, I just, I, I don't, I didn't guess, right? Because I just pulled up the thing and I saw it and I just went. You know what I mean? Like, what was your. Oh, strength your and endurance? endurance. Oh, I maxed it two months in the wipe. I maxed strength two months in the wipe, endurance three months in the wipe. I have been maxed. Well, what level? What, what 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 level were you? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> that might just be the thing where it's like if you play on average to get to level sixty three, like that's yeah. generally enough to get it. Seven sixty two thousand people got max strength. Seventy five thousand people, seventy six thousand people got max endurance. Wait, wasn't strength harder to easier to get than endurance? Yes, that's what confused so me. I got I got max strength long before I got max endurance. Someone wrote the SQL query wrong and they, they, they pulled the data that could be it. The, the stats are all fucking wrong. Could be pack it up, boys. Anyways, that's just interesting to me. This and one other stat when people are always like, is Tarkov dead? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's a lot of people to get to the end. And then the other thing too. So the, uh, the Terra group trail which is the quest line um, that culminated in the extra stash space. Mm -hmm. So the Terrigal Trail was the quest line that culminated in the end. They started that quest chain like 10 days ago, right? Seven months into a wipe, 469,000 accounts accepted the first quest. Now, that doesn't mean that those were all active players. Some people, I'm sure heard hubbub on Twitter and hopped back in the game. But with the amount of people that played a level 30 or 40 and then just like uninstall the game and go play other games for almost 500,000 accounts to have accepted the seven month in quest, that kind of blew me away too. Wait, so seven. How? Okay, wait. So how, where was the, the quest in the progression Everybody, uh, uh, I think you so need to be level, be like, level 15. One? Like, it was, it was, I think it was 15. I think it was Flea was the thing. I know people who had reset their accounts just for funsies who didn't have access to the quest, but I also know of, like, really low-level, like, 20s and late teens that had it and were trying to do it for the extra stash base. I don't think very many. See, the other side of that is 469,000 people accepted it. 17,000 people finished the last time. <laughs> 3.7%. Neat. Yeah. And it's crazy because like it, it, what we talked about last night or last week, well, I think was it the, the, the Bitcoin, the hatchet and the labs card access were like, Oh, and the stupid, key like it was just like it was a 19 part quest chain and like three of them prohibited you know 300,000 people from getting it done because like I just oh, I don't know why it needed to be black and green you know what I mean um anyways those were just interesting tidbits on like I was surprised to see that almost a half a million accounts accepted that quest that laid into the wipe that just kind of blew me away Anyways, <laughs> so yeah, well, chromatic aberrations, the wipe.
Uh, dude, I'm so I'm so glad that you <laughs> talked me out. I wasn't on the ledge, but I was like thinking about I was it. I was sitting down at like uh, at the at the rooftop bar, having drinks, having a, enjoying myself over here, going hmm. That Tarkov shaped ledge over there. I don't know. Do I want to give it a? And now I'm like, now nah, I'm good. This oh, yeah. Well, I'm glad this. to have provided that service to you. Now, now maybe what will see? I I started to consider. I'm like that could be some like Patreon limited content. <laughs> where it's like maybe maybe I do like. 20 raids with Jesse and it would just be like Patreon exclusive. <laughs> Explicit <Maybe>. content. <laughs> yeah. NC 17 plus. Yeah. <clears throat> you got to send me pictures of your feet first. For yeah. That. yeah. 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 Please don't. God, please don't. Um. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the wipe. Um, you know, I am, I'm having fun. <clears throat> I'm hoping to, I don't think I'm going to go for Kappa. I literally think I'm just going to cruise through and uh, just have fun playing streets. It's a short wipe. And theoretically, according to the roadmaps and according to what Nikita said, Arena is coming out sometime in the fall. So I'm assuming October, November. So I think it's just kind of like by time until then. That'll hold us over. We get a wipe in December. <clears throat> but that's uh that's the stuff. Been cruising cruising on Diablo, having fun. Yep. Good. I I I do have to say there have been a couple of little things that are like, oh, kind of Tarkov reminiscent. Oh, really? Uh bro, they oh, they they just patched. They just had like a, a hotfix patch and I'm like, "Oh, okay, cool." Then see the patch notes and it's like they fixed like of the like 20 things in the list, like three of them were fixing bugs that I didn't know were bugs that like were nice. <laughs> no, like don't fix those fucking bugs. Classic. Yep. Like, come on, man. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, overall, overall, I'm, I'm enjoying myself still have still have no desire to, to fuck around with anything else. So I feel that that's a good feeling. That's a good feeling. I, I do I do think like I I don't know if I'll give Tarkov a try before the next wipe. Yeah. I might I might jump in, you know, it's it's entirely possible that like three months from now I might be, you know, Diablo might be a little stale yeah. or something, right? Um so I'm I'm not like I mean it's also gonna entirely say possible that, that three months from now Arena comes out. And that's like the perfect not Tarkov Tarkov for you to just like mess around with and you know what I mean? See, right? Like, yeah, you know, like you can hop into the Tarkov world, but not have to do the stupid pocket watch. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, we'll see how she goes. You know, that, that might be October, November, kind of like the perfect time. I don't know. So, yeah. But then again, there's also, I mean, Starfield yeah. and, uh, at some point I may or may not check out Baldur's Gate. Um, dude, were you ever, were you an armored core fan as a kid? No. Is that, was that made by, um, the, yeah, it's from soft, the dark souls, from Elden Soft, Ring, yeah, yeah. but it's like mech. It's like dark souls plus Gundam. I loved armored core when I was a kid. I sucked at them, but they were super fun. And armored core six comes out in like two weeks or something. And I Namco. Wait, do they own from soft? I have no idea. Or are they just like the publisher? Yeah, maybe. Let me look. I mean, I gotta say, I, I've like the trailer looks pretty sick. It's yeah. there's just something about Gundam type yeah. things that never no, for me never did it for me. Oh really? I feel that. Yeah, I don't know. Like Dude, I loved it. Gundam, I remember like Zoids and like all that stuff. I loved that so when I was a kid. Yeah, I, I never watched like Gundam Wing or like Transformers or yeah, any of that stuff like yeah. 
I don't know. Yeah. Well, I was just wondering because that that's like a big nostalgia thing for a lot of people. Like it's, yeah, been, yeah, yeah. it's been somebody said it. I, th I think it's been like 18 years or something since an Armored Core game came out or like f f 10 years. It's been a long time, over a decade since is, an Armored Core game came out. Is it like a single player story kind of thing or, you know, like a. Yeah. Or does it have like does it have um like online pvp it does have a pvp mode like arenas where you can like fight other people it's very like customized focus like it's you know you spend time like i want you know a better core which has better heat distribution but then i need more energy for my weapons and it's like all customizing you play the levels it's one of those games where like playing the level again to try and like s tier it s rank it it's like a part of it um mission based not open world yeah, they're keeping it like really true to how the old games used to be, but then you can also PvP. I would imagine like the PvP. I, I'm picturing it like, what was that game with the gruff daddies and the chainsaws? The gruff daddies. Yeah, you know, the guy's name was, um, you know, fuck. What was the gruff his name? daddies and the chainsaws? Yeah, the big thick daddy oh, gears, gears of war. Of I tell me that those aren't gruff no, daddies. No, you're so right. I don't know why. I was just thinking proper, like, out on the yard chainsaw. But now I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, not not one of those chainsaws. One of one of the, one of these chainsaws. One of these chainsaws. Gears um, of War. Yeah. I imagine it was like that. Like you could play Gears of War online, and the PvP was just a little fucking jank, yeah. and it was like never. You'd, you'd spend like ten minutes in a queue because it wasn't Tarkov. But because there were 17 people playing PvP. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I don't know because I never played the PvP in the older games. Like, I was more just into the missions. So I don't really know how that goes. But, huh. but yeah, lots of games coming out. Yeah, Baldur's Gate, Starfield, Armored Core, Diablo, PoE 2. Like, I've never played that. But, like, I know there's people are hyped. Like, there's just, like, lots of games coming out. You know what I mean? So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. But, um... Yeah. So uh thank you guys. Thanks for hanging. Uh once again, just another little plug uh for the Patreon. We'll have links down in the description, patreon.com slash pod the podcast pod. And uh we're super excited to launch it and get it out there. We're super excited to make more content together because we've had fun doing this. And um so yeah, if you're looking for another way to support or to get more of Jesse and Veritas molding about stuff check out the Patreon. But um, thank you again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this episode. This will all be live on the channel on Monday. You guys are awesome. And uh, we'll see you all on the next one. Peace.